Hello everyone, Roy Kirkhoff here. This here is a picture I took of this Smith Premier typewriter number one in Bodie, California. This was sitting in the lobby of the Wheaton and Hollis Hotel. This was Smith's first typewriter from 1889 and it actually had two keyboards, no shift keys, with the upper and lower case keyboard separately, which is kind of interesting. So I printed it at 18 by 12 inches on breathing color uh, vibrance matte photo paper, which you can print on with any inkjet printer. I'm going to mount it on a self adhesive backboard to give it some support. And then I'm going to spray it with a varnish so that the inks don't bleed for the next step, which is to uh, paint on an acrylic coating, an acrylic medium, which is transparent, so then after that we can uh, color it with oils. Let's do this. The way this is done, you peel back a small part the cover to expose the adhesive which is here and you line it up nicely so you push it down in the middle and then go outward pushing down onto the self adhesive And then I like to use my laminator to finally mount the photo on the adhesive board by pulling away the cover as it goes through. And in this step, I spray on golden gloss archival varnish to uh, fix the inks. And I do this, I did this two times with drying time in between. And after the varnish is dry, which is normally after a couple of hours, I will brush on this golden acrylic medium. This is golden gloss glazing liquid. So this is what will finally seal the image and we can paint on this. And because it's pretty much impossible to avoid brush strokes when you put this acrylic medium on, uh, brushing it on with a with a brush, as you can see here, I like to like follow kind of the the structure, the object that that's in the photo. So um, it looks like it will be part of the photo when later on we add paint to it. Let's color this with oil glazes. So we're going to use Liquin from Windsor & Newton. Take some of that. And let's take some burnt umber. I was thinking to go with the theme. If you put this on lightly, it has a bit of a sepia look to it. So we're taking burnt umber liquid, take some of that, mix it into a liquid. So we're making an oil glaze now. So it's much more liquid than oil, than the paint. Let's see how this turns out. A little more paint. This might be good. 
and then I would like to put it on with a cotton round just like I do with Marshall photo oils but we kind of created our own Marshall photo oils now and you can just wipe it on so initially I thought I was gonna color this with acrylic glazes but since they were only invented like the synthetic ones in the 1940s I thought in order to stick with the theme of this old typewriter at Bodie California let's do this with oils which have been around much longer and and even the hand it's funny because the hand coloring that people used to do that was the thing people did in, in these days and even though the first color photo was created in 18 as early as 1855 the the first hand colored photo was a daguerreotype and the daguerreotype was invented by Louis Daguerre a Frenchman in 18 38-1839 so hand coloring is a, a technique from those days where you by hand add color to, to an illustration black and white illustration or a black and white photo of course nowadays you can also touch up color photos by hand coloring them and hand coloring has been one of the most efficient ways to add color to a photo up until the 1950s and that's when Kodak came out with uh, Kodachrome color film and was available to the public still after that it's never completely gone away actually it's really my job it's what I do I will still make a video in which I will add acrylic glazes to a black and white photo that is printed with an inkjet. I did one the other day where I used acrylic glazes on a chemically developed photo. And in there I said I would make a video where I will do it on an inkjet print just with the same coating and all that we did that I did here. But that's still uh, in the planning. Okay, so if we take a clean cotton round now, let's smooth out some of these brush strokes that you can see by just dabbing it on. Like that, so you pick up a little bit. It's okay to leave some structure in there. There we go. Okay, what we could do, we could add a little bit more paint to this mix here. Let's see if we can make it a little more saturated, a little less transparent. Pick that up and put a little bit more in the foreground here. Like that. So that liquid is stinky stuff and you, you want to be in like a ventilated environment. Actually I'm doing this now in my garage with the big garage door open. I think you can hear the birds maybe. Okay. I believe the, this original typewriter had some blue in here. So let's grab a little bit more liquid. Not too much. Actually, I took already too much here. Take some, 
take some ultramarine and a cleaned brush. You can also add this with a brush to to the photo, but I I just like to use cotton rounds because it allows you to do it, add it very uniformly. Yeah, let's grab some blue, put that in here. Let's see, it might be too light, we'll see. Yeah, I think I want a little more. That's pretty good. And then let's grab a clean new cotton round, pick up some of that paint and put it on here. Also the cool warm contrast works nice. bit up here so when I think it was 2014 I went to Bodhi and I set up uh, arranged a photo shoot I really wanted to go inside the buildings you, you can it's a state it's a state historic park so you can walk around look through the windows there's a couple of buildings that are open but I really wanted to go inside the ones that you cannot go into so I arranged this with the Bodhi Foundation they, they organize photo shoots also for groups and so I paid for a permit got into seven buildings this was one of them this is the Wheaton and Hollis Hotel and this Smith Premier typewriter is sitting on the desk in the lobby you can actually also see it through the window but it was cool to get up close like this and actually I believe I combined two photos I took one very sharp one with a deep depth of field where everything was sharp but I wanted to, the background to be blurry so I took another one with a smaller depth of field and combined them so we have a nice blurry background sharp typewriter. So you can also use q-tips which is what I use with Marshall photo oils also a lot for the more detailed work And then let's make a little bit of orange. So this is cadmium red, cadmium yellow. Clean the brush. Mix them. And I think we can use this part, the old burnt umber mix. And make use some of that transparency to add some to the wood here. Actually turned more into a yellow ochre, but that's fine. It's nice to have some variation of colors, especially in larger areas. And 
let's add that here and there too. Maybe even some of that blue, let's see. Kind of mixed with the, the browns, and blue and brown kind of gives like a gray, black, which is not really my intention, so let's add some more blue here. And then disperse it a little bit with the clean side of the cotton round. There we go. And then this is a little too much yellow here. There we go. Maybe a tad more of red. Let's see what that looks like. more red. There we go. Yeah, let's keep it simple. I think this is done. This piece is finished. Could do a lot more to it, but maybe rusty colors or something on the typewriter. But I'm um, I'm happy the way this is. This looks very simple. It looks like a, like a classic hand-colored photo from late 1800s. So let's stop here. And here we go. Smith Premier typewriter at 18 by 12 inches. Hand-colored with diluted oils using liquid. This will, because of the liquid and the very thin layers we put on it, this will be dry in a couple of hours, which is pretty nice too. If you wanted to, you can still even make corrections now for the next hour or so. Or even wipe it completely off for some reason if you wanted to do that. So if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time.